Hi guys! Today we'll be making a plushie with Hugsy Minky from Big Z Fabrics. I will be using banana, yellow, ivory, and charcoal. I will be machine sewing my plushie, but I'm going to go over three different hand stitches as well for those of you who don't have a machine at home. So let's get into the hand stitching. First I'll show you the ladder stitch. You're going to want to start with your fabrics wrong side together and pull your needle through the underside of one side. You're going to then cross it over to the other side making sure it's even with the first stitch that you did and do one single straight stitch into the side of the fabric. Pull it through, double check that your stitch is going straight with, this is an invisible stitch, so you want to make sure your stitches are as straight as possible so that your seam is very well hidden. Now you're going to go to the other side of the other fabric and do one single straight stitch into it, like you did on the first side. This stitch is made to be sewn from the outside of your fabric, and when pulled tight, it will make an invisible seam that is fairly noticeable or not noticeable at all if you've used the right color fabric and thread. You'll notice that I am using the Ivory Minky with the black thread. This is to show you the stitches more clearly instead of using the correct colors so that it would hide better. But you can see I've pulled it tight and the seam is barely noticeable even with the black thread. The next one I'll show you is the back stitch. Start with your fabrics right sides together so you're sewing from the back of the fabric and you're going to do a straight stitch. Instead of doing a second straight stitch in front of that one though, you're going to go between the stitches that you just did, between the knot and the first stitch. And then you're just going to keep continuing doing that. Instead of going forward, go backwards between the stitch and then forwards. This will make also a very strong mostly invisible seam. Again, it would be more invisible if I weren't using black thread. Just keep pulling your stitches tight and do them in a small stitch width and you'll be good. The third one will be a blanket stitch. You're going to start wrong, uh, right sides together, starting from the back of the fabric, and do a singular whip stitch in. But instead of finishing out the whip stitch in a loop, you're going to pull your needle through the loop. So. Instead of just pulling that tight, you're going to go through the loop so that it locks in your thread. Go all the way through again, and then pull through the loop, and you'll see how it's making like a bridge of thread across. That's what you want. If you do these at a small stitch width, it's extremely strong and nearly invisible from the other side of the fabric. Now we're going to go and pattern out our patterns onto the fabric. I am using my own pattern. If you don't have your own pattern, you can make one yourself or you can buy one from another maker. I would personally recommend Teacup Lion on Etsy. Her patterns are very easy to follow. But you can use any pattern that you have at home or one that you've made. When you're using a fabric like Minky though, Make sure that your fabric is running in the correct direction. Minky has fibers that kind of stand up in when brushed in the wrong direction. So you want to make uh, sure that your pattern has all of those fibers going in the correct direction that you'd like them to go in before patterning out your pieces onto it. And when you're cutting it out, Make sure to pin your fabric together so that it doesn't slide around. Minky is a very slippery fabric and it likes to move around on you, so make sure that you're pinning that in place so it's not moving everywhere. Now we're going to pin all of our pieces of fabric together. This would be pinning together any markings that you have on your plushie, as well as marking out where paw pads go. You can see that I've cut out just a square of the gray Minky for the paw pads there. That makes it a lot easier to sew and cut off the extra fabric later, rather than trying to go around the tiny little complex curves of the toes. I'll also be pinning together any darts that are on there that I need to sew first, but not 
the halves of the legs together or the halves of the arms together just yet until the markings are sewn. Those will be pinned a little bit later. You can see here I'm doing the same square technique with the feet. And then we move on to sewing. I started with the paw pads because it was easiest to do those and cut off the extra fabric so that I could pin those down to the other pieces. Because you can see here I was pinning the arms and then moved on to the feet pads. <laughs> And then I sewed together the ears, and I was sewing the markings into the front of the body and the back of the body, as well as putting together the head. Once the legs are all sewn together with the markings, then I will pin them together and sew the outsides of the legs. But I don't sew the bottom of the foot because we're going to put the circle with the paw pad on it into the bottom of the foot. And you can see I'm pinning that right there. And you're just going to sew all the way around the circle and that's going to create the bottom part of your foot rather than having it flatter. And once I've got the body pieces have their markings in, I'm going to sew the halves together so that we have a full front and a full back. And then I'm going to sew them together at the shoulders so that I can attach the arms into it. And once the arms are in, you can sew together the bottom part of the arm as well as the side seam in one go. After you've sewn together the belly and butt pieces, you'll have a hole open for the legs to go into, and you can just pin those in and sew all around the hip joint, as well as pinning in the head to the neck and sewing that in. When you're sewing together the back piece, don't forget to leave a hole so that you can turn that inside out and be able to flip your plushie and actually be able to stuff it through the hole as well. And here you can see that I'm stuffing. You can stuff it to your liking. You can have it as hard or as soft as you'd like. Uh, you can also opt to put in any hearts or any scents if you would like to have a scented plushie. For the eyes, I'm just going to paint that on because it's a lot easier than sewing in the tiny pieces. So you can see me just painting and I'm using fabric paint for that. We'll ladder stitch close the back and we'll also ladder stitch on the tail. Because we're going from the outside, we want to have a strong invisible stitch. Make sure your stitch length is very small so that it can be seamless. We'll also ladder stitch on the ears. I'm doing floppy ears, so I'm just doing a couple straight stitches into the bottom of the ear down to the head so that it stays in place. And now we can pin on the facial features. Your features may be different than mine, but this was for my character, so I had to cut out the small little pieces of yellow for the eyebrow dots and the gray nose. And you can see a nice close-up shot of that paw pad as well. I'm using the black thread around the eyes as a stylistic choice, but you can use a matching color if that's what you prefer. And once the facial features are done, uh, if you don't want to add any accessories onto the plushie, then you're done. A plushie is a great project for a kid who's learning how to sew, or even an adult like me who just likes plushies. The Minky was lovely to work with, and the colors were very vibrant and beautiful, and I really enjoyed working with them. A final note that I have to say is it matches their eco shag fur perfectly. I also purchased the fur for my fursuit from Big Z Fabrics, and it's an exact match. So I'm really excited about that. So now I have a mini me. <laughs> uh, so that's about it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.